Yeah, guys, welcome back to the workshop. So today we're just talking about grinding uh, belts and grinders in general. I've had a few people ask me since I did my uh, grinder series a while back, which I'll uh, link in a card. Um, they've asked me a few more questions about grinding belts, and one of the most common questions I get is belt tick or belt slap, as I call it, um, and how to avoid it. So, for those of you who don't know what belt tick is, um, I'm just going to get, <clears throat> let's see, which one do I know actually has a really bad tick? This one. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Unfortunately, I only have high quality belts because I don't buy cheap belts anymore. I used to. But um, it's the sound. Actually, no. This polishing belt. This polishing belt will do it. I need to be gentle with it because it's a polishing belt, not a grinding belt. <laughs> but it is the sound, normally, of the seam passing over a piece of metal. You can hear that tap, 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 tap. Now, what this is, and it's stopped almost in the perfect spot, is you see this seam here, that's where the uh, end of the belt, because obviously belts don't come circular, they come in long sheets and they're cut out and then uh, split. And then the manufacturer uh, splices them together, normally with uh, a fiberglass or um, some form of pro polypropylene um, tape, which is a really strong adhesive, um, but it also increases the thickness uh, and the best way to avoid it is to buy expensive belts the more expensive the belt normally the better it is because they low profile their seams I have some cubitrons here so uh, it's not obvious but you can see this line here of a uh, dull material outside they actually thin the belt backing uh, before putting the seam in. So the seam is the exact same thickness as the, the main belt. What you'll find with cheaper brands is that they don't thin the, the belt seam. All they do is just slap that um, connector on uh, without doing that. Uh, the Yeah, so, now here we go. This is a cling spore. And cling spore don't do too bad a job, but you can see there's a raised ridge there. Uh, I've found that a couple of the clean spores that I've used have had pretty heavy um, belt seams. And that's what causes it. Uh, and it's also with the backing. It's the hard backing. Uh, if you were to use a belt that has a relatively high... I think this one's worn down quite a bit. So you can hear that tap. If, I'm to, if I use the slack belt between the idler wheel and the uh, main platen, it doesn't cause my hand to jump around as much. You can't hear that tap as much as you can. There, so a lot of it comes down to the supporting material. Uh, if you've got a contact wheel with a rubber, uh, especially the serrated rubber uh, contact wheels, they will not tap as badly as a solid platen. Uh, and obviously using a slack belt uh, will do that as well. The other thing to keep in mind is the speed. The faster you run it, the less tap you're going to have. But it does have a certain frequency basis to it. So at a really low speed, it's kind of a, just a tap, 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 tap. If I run it up to about half speed, okay, so this is about 2,007 feet per minute. You 
So you can hear that tap, 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 tap. That, that would be the speed at what a normal, um, what a normal wood linisher would run at. This is 4,000 service feet per minute. So this is what a, uh, a noob grinder or uh, you know any, any 2x72, 1x38 running at 60 hertz should run at. You should be able to hear that you can still hear that tap, 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 tap. And I'm feeling it in the piece. The piece is wanting to jump and bob bubble or it. If I ramp this up to the full 7,000, At the full 7,000, you can't hear it because it's running so fast that you're coming past that uh, seam lump really, really quickly, uh, and which is why they advise you to run ceramic belts uh, relatively fast because it smooths out uh, the running rather than letting it bounce around. It also increases the belt life because it continually shatters the, um, the ceramic coating and constantly giving you fresh grit to cut with. So that's um, my main advice for people who are having belt click problems. It's very, very common on aluminium oxide belts because aluminium oxide belts tend to be on the cheaper side. The, uh, unless you're buying from a reputable source uh, that is selling a decent quality uh, aluminium oxide belt, you're not going to get a decent product. Um, as far as my personal preference, I love Cubitron belts because uh, although they are uh, probably some of the more expensive belts on the market, they are 100% foolproof. Like, I love these things. I've, I've been running them quite hard. I haven't had any problems with it. The finishes that come off them are amazing. And uh, as I said, that belt splice being um, thinned out, the web being thinned out before the splice put on, means that you don't get any tap. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically my main advice, is find a reputable supplier um, I haven't played with combat abrasives uh, since they made the switch uh, from their old shredders to the new ones, so I can't speak on their quality. I've had some bad experiences with Klingspore, but uh, that is not to say that they are terrible. I know that uh, guys like Niels Vandenberg really like Klingspore, so um, there's that. But normally, the rule is, the more expensive the belt, the better the quality of the belt. So basically, buy, uh, buy once, cry once, spend the extra money. For the price of a single Cubitron, I will get the, the, uh, the work of two Klingspore belts, and the Cubitron's only worth like $3 more. So, for me, buying a Cubitron is actually more cost effective over buying really cheap belts. Uh, yeah, hopefully that helps. This has just been a little quick tip video for, uh, for you guys who've been asking me. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to send them to me uh, on Instagram or Facebook or even on my email, sandtownsbladesmith at gmail.com. Make sure to check out all of my links down below to my merchandise, my Patreon, my wonderful patrons who I will put here uh, are continuing to support me and you know make stuff like this possible. Uh, I've got more content for them coming out very soon, so if you want to come and join the Patreon family, please feel free to do so. If you want to see more tips and tricks videos like this and build videos, which I'll be doing more of very soon, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon to be notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you want to help out the channel and you don't have you know, the funds because everyone's suffering right now with COVID, um, just hit that like button, maybe leave us a comment, say hi, ask me a question, whatever you want. I always appreciate it. With that being said, have a good one, guys. I'll see you next video.